So in this video, we're going to be discussing the way that Jill solves the puzzle in the armor room in the first Resident Evil game versus the way she solves it in the SD novel Resident Evil The Umbrella Conspiracy. And if this is your first time here, consider shooting that subscribe button in the face since I post Resident Evil content every single week. So of course we'll start with the video games. So normally the way you solve this puzzle is by pushing both armored statues over the two grades so that the poison doesn't get released in the room. Now after that's been completed, you can go to the middle section of the room and press the big red button and it'll release the glass panel so you can then pick up the sun crest. Now out of all the puzzles in the game, this one in particular isn't a hard one. It's actually one of the simpler ones that you'll find in the original game. But if you do die, you'll actually realize pretty quickly how to solve it since you can actually literally just leave the room and come back for another try. Now, the way that Jill solves this puzzle in the book, on the other hand, is hilarious. In pages 169 to 170, Jill actually remembers what her father used to tell her when he would train her to be a thief. So I'll start reading. Every riddle has more than one answer, Jilly. Don't forget it. Jill grins suddenly. Why push the button at all? She crouched down next to the case and took a firm grip on the barrel of her handgun, and with a single firm tap, the glass cracked, thin lines spidering away from the impact. She used the butt of the gun to knock out a thick chunk and reached carefully inside, and she withdrew a hexagonal copper crest, engraved with an archaic smiling sun. She smiled back at it, pleased with her solution. Apparently, some of the house's tricks could be worked around, provided she ignored a few rules of fair play. All the same, she found herself hurrying back to the door, not wanting to call it a win until she was clear of the solemn chamber. Stepping back into the blood-hued corridor, she stood for a moment, holding the crest as she weighed her options. And so there you have it, Jill literally outsmarts the armor puzzle by cheating. Now what I find hilarious is that her breaking the glass didn't trigger the trap. Like what was George Trevor thinking when he made and constructed this trap for Spencer? I think it's also funny to think about how much effort George literally put into making this trap, you know, making the architecture for this room, and yet it's easily bypassed by just breaking the glass and leaving with the treasure. Now we can definitely assume that this was just a funny Easter egg that was placed in the book to remind the reader of Jill's past since she used to be a thief, and as well as cheating in one of the traps actually doesn't occur in the rest of the book or the video game. The only other time that I can actually remember that it, I guess one could argue was kind of cheating was the famous Jill sandwich scene, which I'll actually talk about in another video. Now, another interesting thing is, is that the remake actually addresses this issue by locking the treasure in a kind of jail-like state. So Jill actually wouldn't be able to do the same thing she did in the book, which is kind of a shame, since I actually really like how the book pairs well with the original Resident Evil game without causing major plot holes. In fact, the book actually fixes major plot holes that occur in both Resident Evil games, so that includes both the original director's cut and as well as the remake. Now like I said, it is a shame that they fixed this since it just adds a discrepancy between book and the remake. Now on top of this, the developers of the Resident Evil remake also decided to change the treasure that you would actually normally find in this room, but not just this room, but in several other rooms. So normally you would actually acquire four crests and this would in turn open the garden shed door. But in the remake, they actually switch this to the four masks that unlocks the cemetery coffin. And once you defeat the little mini boss in the coffin, it would then give you a medallion to go and then open the garden shed door. Though according to the Resident Evil wiki, the developers were actually going to keep it like the original game, but they made a last minute change and switched the areas that you would normally acquire the crests to that of the masks instead. Though so, the crest still made it in the final game, though it got reworked into one of the lamest puzzles in the game in my opinion. So you only acquire a wind crest, and you actually have to go and place it on the tombstone in the cemetery outside of Lisa's cabin. And in turn, this would actually give you the other three crests. So it was kind of weird. I mean, you didn't have to go and find these three other crests and then come back to the cemetery. No, they just basically just give you the three crests to solve a pretty rushed puzzle, which would actually just give you the cold pie python magnum. So personally, I actually don't like the change since they just ended up fixing an issue that didn't need solving. And if anything, it added two more issues on top of this. Like I just mentioned, it added a discrepancy with the remake and the novel. And in the long run, we actually still got a lame puzzle. It just got reworked in another part of the game. And in my opinion, I actually think that the puzzle actually got worse. I didn't like the fact that they just gave you the crest and were like, here, solve it, go to the next tombstone. That's like literally just like a couple of 
of meters away. So it wasn't really a puzzle. It was more like, here's a couple of crests, go put it, and then here's a magnum for your reward. Well, anyways, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Jill cheating the armor puzzle room. And also let me know if you agree with my opinion on why I believe changing this puzzle in the remake added more issues to the lore's consistency. And for those of you who haven't read the S.D. Perry novels, I highly recommend picking up The Umbrella Conspiracy. I actually just got the chance to read it for the first time over the holidays, and I enjoyed it so much that I already bought the second and third book. I really like how it explains a lot of extra stuff that the games didn't really focus on. And I also really enjoyed the fact that you could read what the characters were thinking during crucial events in the mansion incident. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to knife that like button and remember to shoot that subscribe button in the face if this is your first time here. And also remember to punch that notification bell like Chris punches that boulder in Resident Evil 5 so that you guys never miss a video. Well, thank you so much everybody for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one when you return to the world of Resident Evil. The right to be a god, that right is now mine.